Hello, welcome to this video on the hip data structure. My name is Nzako Baloi and I hope you'll enjoy the lesson. What we hope to achieve by the end of this video is an understanding of the hip tree data structure, the different types of hip tree data structures, and the basic operations one can perform with hip trees. And by way of introduction, it's important to understand that a heap is basically made using a binary tree. All that means is that a heap tree cannot have a node that has more than two children because a binary tree has as a basic property a requirement that each node must have at most two children. Now, with a heap tree, there is, it is a requirement that you start inserting values from the left to the right. This is because a heap tree is supposed to be a complete binary tree, which is the third requirement. And this requirement holds true except for the last level. Okay. What that means is that you have to complete the current level before moving to the next level. So there will be no gaps in your tree. Heaps are often implemented using partially filled arrays. Now to find the index of a child node, one would use the following uh, formulas. For the left child, it's two times parent index plus one. For the right child, is two times parent index plus two. Finding the parent node on the other hand, you do the following. You say child index minus one, and then you divide that by two. Others also use the formulas index, child index minus two, divide by two, or just child index divide by two. You can try this out. I have tried it out also in one of the previous videos and it works just fine. Now, there are two types of heaps that I want to introduce to you today. And these are called the max heap and the min heap. And they are exactly that. With the max heap, the biggest value is at the root. All that means is every node, child node, will have a value that is less than its parent because you expect in other words the big dogs to be at the top. With the mean heap, on the other hand, it's the complete opposite. All right? It is, if you would like, a governance by the people. So the smallest value is at the top. As a consequence, each child node will have a value that is greater than its parent. It's more like what people would call a bottom-up approach, whereas a max heap would be more like a top-down approach. Okay? Let's look at some of the basic heap operations and what is involved. Insert is one of those operations, and it's basically about adding a value to a heap. After having added a value to the heap, by the way, you will remember that insertion happens from the left to the right. When you have added the value to the heap, you have to rebuild the heap after the insertion. And this is called heap up. Why is it called heap up? It's simply because you, after adding that value at the bottom, you have to consider where it fits in the bigger scheme of things. And therefore, you might need to move that value up the hierarchy. All right. So, the next one is basically top, which is to retrieve a copy of the root node. This is important because it supports the remove operation. Because with heaps, you remove value only from the root node. So, you can only remove the root node. Okay? Now, after removing that particular heap node, root node rather, you have to rebuild the heap after that deletion. It's called heap down because once you remove a node up there, you'll replace it with the last added node, which is the, last, the very last descendant. So you'll need to then re-heap from the top and make sure that that 
new node that will make the hip, the root goes down to find its proper location. Okay. The next one is sort. And with sort, it just orders the hip in ascending or descending order. It is important that we now consider some examples in terms of how one would use the hip. But for the purposes of this particular video and lecture, we'll focus on the mean hip. And in particular, we'll focus on the on this top right uh, three, which has also been reduced into an array to make it easy for you to do whatever computations you may need to do, such as those that I've given you an example of. Now, to add the value 6, 6 will, because we add values from the left to right, will belong here, and therefore we'll add it right there. And that is the position in the array. But after adding 6, we realize that no, this violates the mini property, because 6 is smaller than 50, therefore it needs to be up. Therefore we switch the 2. And you'll see the switch also indicated in the array because 6 has taken the position where 50 was and 50 has moved to where 6 was. All right. So when we look at this again, no man, that rule is still not, it's still violated because 8 is greater than 6. Remember that here, the lower values need to be on top. Then for we still need to swap these two values, which is the next step where 6 takes the position of 8 and does so also in reality through the array. That is all that happens. And now when you look at this tree, it is perfectly, it's a perfectly balanced mean hip. There is nothing wrong with the fact that there are no elements under 16 because that completeness that is required with the hip says except for the last level. But every level above this last level, you'll notice that it's actually complete. It's only this which is not complete. All right, let's move on. If you were to consider a max heap for the following elements, 10, 20, 31, 2, 3, 4, 11, 21, and 41, the three that you'll come up with is basically that. And I will not even go into it because it will just be a waste of time. It's just the opposite of the mean heap. As you can see here, the bigger elements are at the top. So that is your max heap. Okay. Now, we have done an insertion to a min heap. Let's now look at a deletion from a min heap. Now, remember, deletions with min heaps or with heaps in general happen at the root. So when we delete, it's almost like a pop which is what you experience with a stack. So what needs to be deleted here is four, because that is our root. Now, when you delete four, what do you replace it with? You replace it with the last descendant. The last descendant here, from what I can see, is 50. So 50 must take the position of four, which is what happens here. And you can see it directly reflected on the array. And that position of 50 was is now empty. But the minute you do that, it's no longer a min heap. What is this Mdala doing up there? Right? So you need to arrange that. Because with a min heap, it's the smaller elements that needs to be at the top. You check 9 and 6, you notice that 6 is smaller, and therefore 6 must go up, and 50 must come down. Okay? Which is what happened here. And you notice it's the same that is happening with the array. When you check here, it's that switch that happened. Next, but now 50 is still bigger than 8 and therefore cannot be rightly placed there because 8 being smaller must be above 50 and therefore the swap happened right there, which is what you have there. Having done that, you now have a perfect min heap in that all the smaller elements are at the top with this particular min heap. So it's quite a balanced mean heap and we're happy. Right. Remember, as I take you through these, you must remember that there are equivalent algorithms that will help one achieve this. 
And it's important that as you do your studying or your further studying, you consider how this has been achieved through both algorithms and code. Just before we conclude, I want you to notice that in certain remove, again in this particular case of log, log n, which like I said in the previous lecture, is actually good news for us. Okay? So, the order of complexity of a min or a max hip, or the hip structure in general, is quite impressive. So there is improved efficiency in terms of the complexity there, which reduces complexity effectively. What have we done in this lecture? We've introduced hip trees, and I've explained that they're actually complete binary trees. Of course, that complete is qualifying that it's only at the last level where it's not strongly enforced. But what is enforced is that completing that last level must always be done from the left to the right. We've also looked at maxip and minim hips and the differences between them. That with maxip, the top element is always at the top and the very highest element must be the root. With min hip, the smallest element of all the of the entire tree must be at the root. And the smallest elements throughout the tree must be the topmost elements. Okay. We also introduced the examples using insert and delete operations. And we also notice that whenever we perform these two operations, we have to either heap up or heap down. With an insert, we would heap up because you inserted at the bottom and you need to locate the positioning of the element as you go up with a deletion, because that deletion will have moved the last descendant to the very top, you will need to then hip down, because you need to find the position of that top element as you re hip the, the, the hip, as that element now moves down to find its correct position, which is why it's called hip down. But also, dealt very briefly with the complexity of the hip tree. With that, I want to thank you, and again, request that you pause this video now and do these exercises so that you can see if you clearly understood the concepts presented herein. After this exercise, you will find the solution. You may now pause. Okay, that is your solution. I will not go through this, but hopefully uh, you would have received the same answer as well. Should this have proved to be difficult, Please do not hesitate to send me an email. In addition to that, this video could not have been sufficient in and of its own. And I'd like to request you to consult this material that's listed here to bolster your knowledge on the HIP3 data structure. It's important that you do so because together with that, you'll start to interact with code that makes HIPs possible. With that, I want to thank you and wish you well. Goodbye.